Hey, my uh, YouTube colleague Justin Dow, who's a um, pretty well known in the YouTube and tool community. He does tool reviews. He does mechanic work. He's a uh, professional mechanic. He works in a Jeep dealership. He just got a brand new Jeep, uh, a diesel JL, and he's going on his very first trail ride tomorrow. So I put together this little uh, list of what I bring. I'm by no means a uh, professional trail rider, but I think that this list may help him uh, or, or it may not. But if if you've got any other suggestions, put them down in the comments below. So uh, I'm sure he and the rest of us would appreciate it of uh, the things that you think uh, are essential to bring on a trail ride. Now this is his first one. So he's somewhere in California and uh, probably some desert climate. So I would imagine what you bring is based upon uh, the climate that you live in or the climate that you're gonna go trail riding in. So uh, check out Justin's channel, Justin Dow. Um, so I would imagine that you, he's going to start having more Jeep videos. So a lot of you that watch my content will probably enjoy his. So he's a, he's a great guy. Uh, he's an army veteran. So, uh, check him out. Thanks. I believe Justin's going to bring his two daughters with him on his first trail ride today. And I also have two daughters and I remember bringing them out on a few trail rides. So I caught up with one of my daughters today and, uh, I asked her a few questions about her Jeep. So listen to what she had to say. So this is my daughter. What is the best thing you like about this Jeep? I like that people ask me about <laughs> So what do you dislike the most about this? I don't really dislike it, but whenever I'm talking to someone, it's kind of loud whenever I'm driving fast on the interstate, so it's hard to communicate. All right. What's your most memorable off-road experience? One time I got, I ran into a pond by accident, kind of, and then I kind of got stuck. How'd you get out? Um with the assistance of three people and a tree and a winch. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, the first stuff we're gonna go over is just basic safety items. So obviously you're gonna need a first aid kit and your first aid kit needs to reflect, uh, you know, what type of maybe terrain you're going in. For example, if you, um, if you're going, if you live in the South like I do, lots of bug bites, mosquito bites, snake bites. Um, you know, if you do a lot of uh, if you got a gun and do a lot of range stuff, then of course you're going to need some uh, some quick clot and some other stuff. As you can see, this kit's got all kind of crap in it. But uh, anyway, so you're going to need a really good first aid kit. Now you don't need something like this. You can go to Walmart and just pick one up for about ten bucks. All right, the very next thing is a fire extinguisher. You'd be real surprised how many fires get out on the trail when you mix gasoline or diesel and rocks and pulling and high torque and firing engines you're there's a big chance you, you could come across a fire and for instance if you're camping out there if you're camping maybe the uh, campfire can get away from you always bring a fire extinguisher another safety item that i consider essential is your comms your communication uh, this is a cb this is an older model cobra it's an all-in-one unit uh, i think it's a, called a cobra uh 75 i think but uh there's a new version of this. Midland also makes one. Jeeps don't have a lot of room in it. At least this Jeep doesn't. And uh, this is an all-in-one unit. So basically, it just ties underneath the dash. This unit is a 19-channel uh, CB, and it also has a built-in weather radio. And a lot of trails, when you go on uh, uh, trail rides with multiple people, they require you to have either a CB or, or another type of GMRS, or a lot of people use these little ham radios now. So uh, you really need to check into your uh, communication requirement of your trail ride, especially if you're going to go with trail guides and stuff, because they, they might require you to have that. I know if you go on a Jeep Jamboree trip, they require you to have a CB. Also, what I would consider a safety item, maybe not personal safety, but auto safety, is some flares. So you might break down on the side of the road or way down in a trail, and you need to signal somebody you're going to need a, a flares. You can even bring one of those flare guns that you use in, uh, in boats. I consider this a safety item, bug spray. Because, uh, you know, if you've got bugs, uh, you know, flying around you and mosquitoes, especially where I live, really nothing else matters. And it can really make an enjoyable day into misery. So bring yourself some good bug spray and some good hats to, to block sun. So, um, and also some, I don't have any in here, but sunscreen. And for personal safety, you may want to, uh, this right here is a safe for a banana. Those of you know what I mean. If you need to put a banana in your, um, in your Jeep, that's a safe for the banana. We we'll also have a banana holder down here. This banana holder happens to have uh, a little knife in there, but um, you know it's always good to have a banana close by. But if not, if you're not a banana person, that's cool. I'm cool with that. But if you are, then 
have your banana easily ready to go. Fire. You need a way to make fire for many reasons. For boiling water, uh, for cooking, for God knows what. And I have this little kit here that I made. It's very simple. All you've got to do is... It um, doesn't cost a lot of money to get prepared for this kind of stuff, guys. You just uh, be sensible about it. Got a ferro rod, some, uh, some big lighters. And in uh, these, I have some matches, and I've got some cotton balls soaked in Vaseline. Cotton balls soaked in Vaseline make really good fire starters. I always bring a little set of binoculars. These little binoculars are really neat. You can get them at Walmart or Ozark Trail for about $9. Uh, not only is it really good to look way down the trail to see if anything's happening, or maybe your buddy is... Uh, is is missing and you need to uh, not back all the way up these come in real handy for that and they're also great to keep the kids occupied get you a couple of these and let them look out the window and enjoy the scenery all right let's talk about um, some recovery gear first a winch now you don't need to go all crazy with winches I got this old Smitty built winch long about 10 years ago on a clearance not a clearance sale it was a grand opening sale for 150 bucks it's the 9,500 pound winch it'll more than pull this Jeep out it, uh, the only uh, repair that I've had to do is this. I've had to replace this little uh, device here. I actually have a video on that. I have an in cab winch uh, controller, and this little device got uh, water in it. They make them a lot better now. The Harbor Freight wrenches, winches are great for those that are that are just you know casual off roaders. But if you don't have the time or the money, remember this video was for somebody on their very first trail ride. Then you might want to think about this. Where I come from, this is called a come along. It's also known as a hand winch. I think I got this at Harbor Freight literally for less than $20. So, and I actually pulled that Jeep out of a mud hole with this come along winch and a tow rope. So, um, I'm not going to tell you how to use it in this video. There's plenty of videos out about that. But if you can't afford or have time to, to install a winch on your Jeep, you might want to pick up one of these from Harbor Freight or somewhere else for 20 bucks and throw it in the back. As far as recovery gear goes, a must-have is a tow strap or tow rope. Um, this is an old Harbor Freight one. They still sell this. It's about uh, it's thirty-five dollars regular price. I think they're actually on sale for twenty-five dollars right now. I mean, this is old, and I have uh, yanked and pulled, God knows how many people and myself out. Even if you don't have a winch, you really need to bring one of these because you may have to pull somebody out with your tow hooks, or they may have to pull you out or get you out of a bad situation. So uh, go to Harbor Freight or another place and pick you up one of these. They're usually less than $30. Okay, some other almost must-haves is a tree strap. So if you do have a, um, this is like a tree saver strap. It's very, basically just a short uh, strap that you wrap around a tree. Get you some of these D-shackles. You can get these at Harbor Freight for 10 bucks a piece, except at Harbor Freight they're black. They're about 7 or $8 a piece at Tractor Supply, which is where I think I got these. So uh, this in a combination with that, and either an electric winch or that uh, hand winch will get you out of almost any situation. And it's always good to get a snatch block. And snatch block, uh, basically what that does, if you use it right, it doubles the strength of your winch. You can watch another video on that. Air compressor. You can't forget an air compressor. There are going to be many times where you need to air down your tires, not only to make a smoother ride, but to get more uh, to get more traction. You can watch plenty of different videos on why that is the case. Not here, but you're going to need an air compressor. This is literally uh, another Harbor Freight item. Uh, this is one of those $65, uh, 150 PSI high volume Harbor Freight air pumps. I've had this thing for years. It works well. The only thing that really didn't work well on it was the bag it comes in is cheap, and I got one of these free or cheap $5 Harbor Freight bags. Of course, label it, and the reason I always label my stuff is so if you need it in very quick, you can grab it. Or A lot of times, you'll have to send somebody. You might be tied up, and you say, hey, go get the air compressor out of my Jeep. If it's labeled, they can easily grab it and not have to go through the rest of your stuff. First time going out on the trail, get you a cheap tire kit. It's literally $5 worth of insurance. This can easily plug a hole in a, even in one of the largest uh, off-road tires and at least be able to get you to safety. A machete. Now, you don't need one like this, Condor. You can literally get your Harbor Freight cheap $5 one, throw it in there. You'd be surprised what you can use it for. You can cut through vines, weeds, whatever you need. It, uh, you may not need it for you the first time, but it is a good addition. I've used this many times. Bungee cords, I always bring them. You never know what you'll use them, and trust me, you'll need them. I can't give you a specific instance, but I've used them everything from tying up uh, broken tie-ride ends to holding down my 
uh, my, my lunch on the roof. Flashlights. You almost can't have too many in a Jeep. Knives, of course. Almost can't have too many. This little pack here is what I keep my winch controller in. So, um, although I did put a uh, an in cab winch, that's the winch controller for the Smitty built on the front. Now your tool kit. This is going to vary so much, but let me tell you what I do. I have a single tool kit I bring, this Husky kit. It's got um, uh, wrenches and um, ratchets, all sizes, metric and SAE. And the reason I only bring, I do bring one other item that I'll show you. But, uh, I, I, you know, breaking down is inevitable. But if you're going with a group of folks, you might can split that up. Some people bring some kind of tools. Some people bring other kind of tools. But, you know, your tools are always going to be also specific to your vehicle. For example, you always want to bring torque sockets if you've got a Jeep. Because Jeep's got plenty of torque sockets. This has that in there. I always bring a table and chair. I used to not. I used to think it took up too much room. But, you know, when you're in the majestic uh, trail and looking over a mountain or a cliff... Instead of sitting in your Jeep or sitting on your Jeep, you really want a chair and a table. You might want to sip a cold one while, while sitting in a nice lawn chair overlooking uh, uh, a canyon uh, sunset. So it's really nice. It just makes it, um, I've done it both ways, and, and it's much better to spend the extra little space it takes to get a table and chair. Now, if you've got a JK or possibly even a JL, they sell these little, they sell these little uh, tables here. This is a little uh, table that goes on the uh, on your tailgate. Uh, I have a video just on this one. You know, you can buy these things for a couple of hundred dollars, but there's actually kind of a knockoff version you can get on Amazon, which is, I got this one. I have a video on it, like I said, and for like 80 bucks. This thing comes in super handy. You can put your uh, stove on there and cook your breakfast, cook your lunch without having to pack that if you don't want, or pack both. A lot of times I'll pack both. And this, well, this just goes without saying. If you don't bring that, well, I feel for you. Leaves are not the best thing. Bring you some of that. Make sure your jack is appropriate for your vehicle. This is on the XJ, and the, this is not a lifted XJ, so this little jack from Walmart, scissor jack, works perfect. This thing originally came with a bottle jack that was garbage, so I, I tested a few jacks, and, and this little $25 scissor jack, it, as long as you're not lifted, works perfect. You can also throw a block of wood in here if you're concerned about that. All right, folks, this is another biggie. Jumper cables. Jumper cables in here and paracord uh, for obvious reasons, and... I'm a big fan of these jump packs, especially this brand. This Odoo brand, in my opinion, is the best bang for the buck. There's a lot of reviews on the internet. I even did a little review on this one comparing it to a Duralast jumper, but I have five of these things. I've got one in every vehicle, and uh, I think this is best bang for the buck. This thing's still got 90%, and it's been in here almost uh, six months. Uh, so this will get you out of a pinch. It'll uh, jump start your car. It's got plenty of power. Um, Project Farm did a really good uh, comparison of these, and this one came out on top. Best bang for the buck. And what trail rod would be good without a campfire? So I always keep this in there. This is just an old Craftsman Made in USA hatchet. Works well. Uh, but any old hatchet will do. Very inexpensive. Throw one in there. Uh, believe it or not, this is more of a luxury item, but Zepco makes a little bitty fishing rod. It's called a Dock Demon. Very, very small. Very easy to keep in your vehicle. I keep my tackle box in there. There's a lot of little pond fishing I like to do if you come across a little pond. So, again, luxury item, but maybe cool for the kitties. All right, I'm going to show you some things that I don't have in my Jeep right now, but uh, that are definitely essential, especially for the first time off All right, you got to have an ice chest or something to keep your, your, your beverages and food cool. I've got this Ozark Trail. I think it's 54-quart ice chest. I got this thing for $68. This is a uh, made-in-USA roto-molded cooler. Uh, I think it sold for like $160 or $170. Uh, it's got the nice basket to keep your uh, dry, dry and your wets iced. Uh, it also is bear compliant if you live in bear country. And um, the reason I got it for $68, it was in the clearance section, is because one of the, uh, this item was loose right here. That was it. So you never know. I'm always looking for deals. I'm not going to buy a $300 uh, ice chest for something I'm not going to use every day. All right, this is going to give you some ideas. This is my little camping section in my shed. So uh, if you, if it's going to be whole cold and you're going to do some camping, uh, on the trail ride, you might want to get a little buddy heater with some propane tanks. 
And if you're going on the trails, obviously you're going to bring your food. And there's nothing better than cooking out on the trail. So if you saw my other video, I said the best camping uh, stove for your Jeep is one of these old Coleman's. And, and I still agree. I mean, because you can get them for like 10 bucks at garage sales and they, they do really well. Like You can watch my other video on that. But this is a great alternative. I just got this. This is a little butane camp stove. It's a lot smaller and it takes these little butane fuel cartridges, literally 20 bucks. Cartridges are like $2. They last for a long time. It works great in high altitude. So um, I would strongly encourage you to bring a camp stove and cook out on the trail um, because it just makes the uh, experience a little bit more um, fun. In my and water. You can't have enough water. And I'm not a big fan of just bringing bottled water out on the trail. I think you need to, you can bring bottled water and put it in your ice chest, but you need to get you something like this. This is, uh, I find this Reliance one the best because uh, I can fill this up with about um, seven gallons of water. And when you take this and put it on it, this actually has a spout. So when you open this up like this, it's got a, uh, a spout that you can reverse and use it um, for many different things, especially out uh, maybe in the deserts of California or Arizona. Everything gets really dusty, so you're going to need water. Uh, not only to drink, but to uh, wash dishes or wash your hands or what have you. And you know the old th saying of threes, you, uh, you can only go three days without water. You can go three days, I mean three weeks without food, but only three days without water. So don't uh, skimp on water. And another thing, worst case scenario, you can use the water in the radiator of your Jeep if you have to do that. And if you're going to cook out on the trail, you're going to need some utensils to cook with. So what I do is if I'm going on a trail where, uh, where I'm going to cook. This is my little kitchen utensils. I keep everything, you know, um, spatula, some cleaning supplies, knives and forks. I even have this little old military mess kit. You can get these for a couple of dollars at military surplus stores. You can cook in them and eat out of them. And this is something else. This is a portable toilet. So, um, you can buy these toilet lids that go on five gallon buckets at Academy Sports or other places for about 10 bucks. Get you some little uh, uh, trash bags that are specifically made for that. That way you don't have to use the latrine out way out in the bush. Now tools, I mean, you can go all, we can go all day about tools. And, uh, but one of the things that I recommend doing is pulling your, uh, your wheels off and see what type of axle nut because one of the common um, repairs that's done on a trail is axle shafts. So you need to make sure you've got a socket to be able to take your axle nut off to remove that. Now, uh, most Jeeps are 36 millimeter. I've got this uh, Tecton. Uh, you can get these for like 10 bucks or 11 bucks off of Amazon. But um, I've got a few of these. But, I mean, we could go on and on and on about tools. But So I'm not, I'm not really going to do that today. Now, you, usually when I hit the trails, I throw some tarps in there. It's easy ground uh, covering. You can throw your top out, you can picnic on it, and it also comes especially handy if you need to work on your Jeep in uh, bad conditions. You throw the tarp under your Jeep, you can work on it. Now, if you really want to get fancy, I made this off-grid uh, shower system. I actually have a video on that. This is a four inch PVC pipe. You strap this to the uh, roof rack of your Jeep, fill it with uh, water, you can fill it with river water, you pressurize, there's a Schrader valve on the end, right here, you see. You pressurize it to about uh, 30 PSI, and I've got a little uh, squirter thing that goes on here, and you can take a shower with this or wash yourself off. And I always bring a shovel with me. Um, these little shovels are great. They're inexpensive, and they don't take up much room. Work gloves. Don't forget some work gloves. So what say you, what would you suggest to Justin and his family to bring on his very first trail ride in his brand new Jeep uh, Rubicon diesel? Uh, leave the comments down below. So I'm by no means a, uh, a expert at this, but that's the stuff that I bring. I've had a Jeep for uh, a little over 10 years and been on a few trail rides and camping trips. And uh, that's, that's just what I do. So uh, let me know what you would do in the comments down below. And everyone, as normal, thanks and have a great weekend.